Hello and welcome to the Siebel CRM Update 20.10 Highlights. My name is Alexander Hansal and I'm happy that you can join us for this presentation. So um, the 20.10 update in October uh, 2020 included several interesting enhancements and features, not all of which were initially documented in the update guide, uh, but we have harvested information from Siebel Bookshelf and the update guide uh, release notes so that we have full picture what 20.10 uh, brings us. So first we have changes to the migration application. So it now uses inbound REST API to access the data store. So previously it used the REST API to authenticate and used JDBC for accessing the data store the tables in the Siebel database. Now it uses REST API for both. We have an update in the workflow monitoring area where we have an enhanced and actually a new view called workflow monitoring configuration view, which replaces the intermediate, not quite so perfect view that has been introduced in 20.7 with the new workflow architecture. We have important security layer changes. So now the gateway security profile supports advanced database connectivity, thus allowing uh, the use of TCPS, of secure TCP to connect your database in, in, with encryption and uh, SSO for the gateway security profile. And also the common database security adapters that we use with object managers now support single sign-on or SSO. Uh, 20.10 comes with an update of uh, certification, so you can officially now run Siebel CRM on Oracle Linux 8 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. And there is a very tiny change, but nonetheless important for any one of us who meddles with uh, the OpenUI API frequently and uh, pr uh, produces OpenUI JavaScript. Uh, the DOM elements for labels change the identifier from a concatenation of control name underscore label to control name underscore label underscore applet identifier. So they're now unique across the page. So let's take a closer look at some of these highlights. First, the migration application. So what's this all about with the REST API for connectivity and authentication? So in prior releases, the migration application required an Oracle client on the machine to establish a JDBC connection to retrieve the data that we are seeing or we can retrieve using the REST API for the migration application. Data such as connections, migration plans, his, historical executions and all that uh, is stored in tables. Uh, the prefix of these tables is S underscore DP for dev to prod actually. And so now with 20.10 and higher, uh, these, this JDBC connection is no longer required. And instead the migration application uses the Siebel inbound REST API to access what we refer to as the data store. It, also, it has been using that already for authentication. So now this is a streamlined release where only a REST endpoint is needed for both connectivity and authentication. So administrators should be aware of this and go to the SMC after the update is applied and check the value in the migration profile as we have seen in the, in the left hand screenshot and that value is empty if you have existing profiles so you can manually add the value here which must be a valid Siebel REST endpoint for your enterprise or you just log in to the migration application the first time and you will get a reminder the dialog shown in uh, the right hand side of the screen where you are prompted to update the REST endpoint URL and you actually can provide it directly in this dialog. And there is a template provided which matches the endpoint of the current environment. So it's 
probably a good match for you and you can accept that value or you can change that value and you can just click OK and that value will be stored in the migration profile. So uh, it's just a one-time thing you have to do. Um, so let's take a look at this in action. So we will, in the demo, we will apply 20.10 and we'll see how the migration application now behaves. The next feature or enhancement that is delivered with 20.10 or any higher update is a new view for configuring uh, the workflow monitoring settings. So we recall that these settings include setting a monitoring level for each activated workflow. Now as of 20.7, workflows are now exclusively managed by workspaces and there is no more notion of actually activating a workflow other than just activating it in the repository such as you would like to activate an applet or a business component and the result will be the workflow will be available to the application. And the view delivered in 20.7, uh, .8 and .9 for the purpose of setting the monitoring levels, for example, was not so perfect. It was just a form applet on top and um, customers were not quite satisfied. So now in 20.10, Oracle delivers a new view called Workflow Monitoring Configuration View. We see that here in the screenshot taken after the updates. It has a list applet on top, makes it easier to locate one or more workflow processes. And for each workflow process selected in the list, you can set the monitoring configuration. Be aware that the monitoring configuration is also workspace specific. So if you have inspected a different workspace or version, you set the monitoring level for that workspace and version here. In the uh, security guide and bookshelf, there are quite a few entries that notify us about new or added or modified information. Uh, and that information is around mostly the advanced database authentication, which is now available for the gateway security profile. Now, the gateway security profile, that's the security profile used to connect to the gateway and that is stored in the uh, SMC. And you can only set it at the bootstrap time when you set up the enterprise the first time or in safe mode. That is, you have to connect to uh, safe mode.html instead of login.html to the SMC and then log in with your safe mode credentials. So you need to go to the settings to set the safe mode first. And so if you should be inclined to change that type of authentication in your existing enterprise, you have to update to 20.10 or higher and then open SMC in safe mode. So you can change the type. You can actually register a new security profile using the new type. So that new type, database authentication, advanced mode, now complements the existing database authentication, which has been kind of demoted to basic mode for development only. So Oracle tells us here that they would recommend that we use the old database authentication type only in development environments and not mission critical environments. So the new mode is the way to go for test or production environments. And once you select that, as you can see in the screenshot, uh, there are no parameters such as host name or port number for your database. It is just a text box labeled connection string. And for Oracle, you would enter the TNS entry here, as, as you can see in the screenshot. And that TNS entry could be the same you have been using before for your uh, Siebel Enterprise. Um, so you can reuse that. And the one I've pasted here for demonstration purposes is exactly the same as I've been using, so it uses TCP. But since it's a pure connect string, you can put all the possible parameters in here that the database supports. So for example, Oracle supports uh, as the protocol value a TCPS, which uh, requires some setup on the database side, of course, uh, to prepare for the secure TCP protocol. Uh, but once you have enabled that, 
you can use TCPS. So officially now the gateway security profile, one would say, supports TCPS. You have to use the new advanced mode database authentication and handle TCPS in the connection string. Also, you see on the screenshot a checkbox, uh, configure web single sign-on. And if you check that box, you have to enter a trust token, which actually um, is quite interesting, will become the master password of sorts for any connection to the gateway. So instead of using your database password for a SATMIN, for example, you have to use that trust token. So that's a little bit confusing, maybe. You might refer to that trust token, you might remember it from setting up the security adapters for LDAP, for example, um, where the trust token has a different role. So here it becomes a password. And uh, you also have to provide an existing username. So we're using LDAP user here because it exists in our database and the password of that username. So this is the name of the user that the authentication subsystem will use to connect to the database and to verify the user that actually logs in. So that's web SSO for the gateway security profile. That's an option. You don't have to use it. You can use it in classic uh, mode, but you can also now configure web SSO for the advanced database authentication for the gateway security profile. And web SSO is also enabled for the common database security adapter. So these, these are enterprise profiles we talk about or named subsystems uh, of the type infrasec adpt underscore DB, which is, uh, for example, the existing standard database security adapter is of that type. And there are, is a group of new parameters and you will find them under advanced parameters for that subsystem type. Uh, these parameters are a flag to enable single sign-on and uh, they correspond to those we have seen in the previous screenshot. You have a trust token, a shared database username and password for that user, which the username and password will be used to connect to the database to verify the user that actually logs in. Uh, and the trust token is, as we can read from documentation, the token that will be compared to whatever is submitted by the AI. So the AI profile needs to be set up for web single sign-on as well, and the same trust token needs to be entered there. So this is interesting changes. So related, related but not related. So the the one change is the support for any type of connection string in the form of advanced database authentication for the gateway security profile. And that's a single security profile. It's not related to the database security adapter. Um, and it also supports web single sign-on. And the news for the database security adapter type is you have new advanced parameters to also enable web single sign-on for this type of adapter. This was only possible to use for LDAP or ADSI adapters in the past. So 20.10 opens new possibilities here. And let's look at that in action. So we have a short demo video where we can see all these security related changes in action. So the uh, next security related enhancement in 20.10 uh, or higher is actually the enforcement of TLS transport layer security version 1.2. And this happens through a modification of the server.xml file that, and that is applicable for the AI and the SES Tomcats. So when you apply the update on the AI or SES, the, your server XML files are going to be modified. So as an administrator, you should have on your post update checklist, if you have such a thing and you should have, uh, one item to check 
on the sanity of your server.xml files if you have included custom parameterization uh, somewhere in this file. So you see the change highlighted here is Oracle adds the SSL protocol and SSL enabled protocols attributes here and sets them to a value of TLS v1.0. And Oracle recommends TLS 1.2 for any communication as per the security guide in 20.10 and higher. So we've covered quite a few highlights in the uh, 20.10 update. Uh, we quickly recap the migration application now uses inbound REST API instead of JDBC to access the data store. We have a new view, an enhanced workflow monitoring configuration view to set the monitoring levels and other attributes of workflow processes. We have seen a demo of setting up the gateway security profile with advanced database connectivity, which also supports SSO and includes support for protocols such as TCPS. We've seen how the database security adapter for object managers can now support SSO. And we have seen the enforcement of TLS 1.2. The other highlights, we have no slides on that, but you can look up the certification tab on my Oracle support to verify that now you can run officially Siebel CRM on Oracle Linux or Red Hat Linux 8. And uh, the DOM change for label elements wouldn't probably affect you very much unless you have some open UI scripting going on that messes with your labels. So if you have that type of scripting in your environment, you should add an item to your post update to-do list. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you.